Well, here we go. Looks like we're going to start up. So, yep. I'm, uh, we got, uh, we got almost 30 people on with us on Facebook. Right on. So, um, I'm just making sure that everybody can see us now because there is a little Facebook delay. So, cool. Well, I'm going to take, I want to start this out as I, I, you know, <clears throat> what we've gone through the last couple months. I heard a really interesting quote. And uh, I wanted to share it with you. I'm, I'm a history buff. I love history. And it's, it's the quote is those, and, and this comes from the, the era of the Revolutionary War. So go back to the founding days of our, of our country. And it says, those that sit on a picket fence get impaled by it. And so I know a lot of people right now, is, you know, what do we do? What do we not do? Um, probably had and, and i'm jumping into questions beforehand because i've had this question you know hey what Randy, what do what, what do i do right now and the answer is you move and you move hard you capture ground that you either lost you capture ground that other people lost you go hard and with intent uh, you, you don't think do things normal there's a lot of opportunity out there not only of of of, of re for some of us that completely closed down of rebuilding your business but of, of taking and capturing new opportunities. So, you know, you can sit on the fence and wonder what's going to happen. And that fence is going to, it's going to impale you. You're going to sit on the fence so long. And, uh, you know, if you ever watched a hummingbird, have you ever watched a hummingbird sit? They don't sit too often. Not too often, but they do. I have seen it. They do. They do. You know, they've got the little tiny hummingbird feet, you know, and, and uh, that big old body and they're not too stable. And it, it's just, it's for me, it's mother nature's just, just move. Don't, don't take heed in, in, in holding still. So a lot of people right now, if you know, your, your, your states have shut down and we came out and said, Hey, unfortunately in the early days, we're not essential right now, man, it's, it's back to it. I love what, uh, you know, our, our local government's doing is they basically told the state, Hey, we know our local city, uh, we, we've got businesses that are starving to death. Uh, we are opening and uh, they left it up to the state to come in and, uh, and shut us down if they felt the need. And it was pretty cool to sit in there. So anyway, well, I, wanted good, to that. The, I was going to say the good news here in LA County is that uh, retail stores can open back up again today. Yeah. I think the, I think social pressure has put a lot of uh, pressure on. They, they've, they've seen the light that they're going to get a lot of disturbances if yep. they, you know, if they don't stop this bullshit. So anyway, okay, there's, there's it. So don't sit on the fence. You're going to get impaled. Hey, you know what I'm excited about today? What's that? We're sending astronauts up to the space station today. Can you believe that? Space. That's really cool. First time in a so, long time. Yeah. It's been almost, almost what, 10 years. And uh, I think it's a, a cool thing for us to be doing. Yeah. So. It is. It's there's two of them going up today, right? Two astronauts. Yeah. Two, two. Yep. So, they've got fancy new space suits that look all modern and Star yeah, Trek like yeah. and everything. Yeah, yeah. they like they 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 uh, they'd even make me look skinny. Uh, probably not, but you know. <laughs> um, <coughs> yeah, it's uh, that's pretty exciting news. So okay, let's jump into it. Cool. Well, the uh, the very first question on Facebook uh, was an easy one. What happened to the intro music? So um, you know, I, I just didn't get that far this morning, guys. Sorry. I know you guys are starting to like that music. Whoever asked that, you know, intro music, that was on my list too. And, you know, I was a big one. Who pushed for the intro music? Uh, that was, um, let's see, Spot Free Detail. So that is, is that Rick Kolb, I think? Yeah. Out, I, in, uh, out in South Carolina, North Carolina, something like that. All right, Rick, good idea. Because I'm an intro music guy too. So thank you. We'll put the pressure on this. <laughs> He's yeah, a music so, sorry. Pretty serious music guy, but kind of, kind of, kind of screwed the pooch on the music this morning, didn't you? Yeah, okay. I was, I was so a little slow. Coffee. It's okay. You need to start drinking Swirl Killer coffee. That will, it'll give you what, what's Red Bulls? It'll give you wings. <laughs> Mine gives uh, me more. it gives you horns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what do you want? So I know we have a few. Um, uh, a few questions that we got through email ahead of time on this. And uh, I sent over a bunch to you. Got any you, you want to start with? You want me to just yeah, grab one? Yeah, go ahead and start with, uh, I think, what was his, the gentleman's name? Um, is that, 
let me go through and real quick. I'm not sure if I've got the actual, his name, but uh, suppressed uh, 67 comment. And hopefully it's a, uh, it's recorded. I would like to listen in later. Uh, do you have any experience with the flex corded uh, XCE? And if so, how do you like it in contrast to the 341? Additionally, since it's on a five inch backing plate, what pads do you like for it? Uh, I am not a DA guy. I don't like dual action. Uh, I'm a forced action guy. Uh, it's a good little unit. Um, so I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I like, I'm a, I'm a rotary guy that has put more, probably more hours into forced action than anybody on the planet, literally. And, and, and I'm not bullshitting. It's just, I vested a lot into learning the capabilities of forced action. So therefore I, I think forced action is amazing. I think it's a tool that most people that we come into training, I, you know, we, 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 I won't say we convert them. We teach them how to properly use it. Now there is a time that random orbit, you know, DA will, 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 there's a benefit to it. Uh, but if you get, if you take the time to learn the 3401 uh, forced action is that you will, uh, we've got some amazing detailers that are doing the amazing work on amazing cars and they're going away from start to finish uh, from heavy cut to uh, finish work jeweling with 341. Now, with that being said, if you're going to use the DA, is uh, we kind of spread the love with pads. We, we like the low profile uh, pads. Uh, so three, uh, one of them is going to be one that you've maybe never heard of. So, you know, we like the, we like Justin Lobato's, um, you know, is the reflection artist uh, series. Uh, it's a great, it's a great pad setup. We also like Lake countries. Uh, they got several, uh, believe it or not, I've gone back in time. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Lake country has got a CCS series that's been out for probably a dozen years, maybe 15 years. <clears throat> and it's working really well at the modern day compounds and polishes. The other one is that there's DRC 2000. <clears throat> DRC is a small company. Um, the Sabo family uh, owns the brand. They own, excuse me, <clears throat> they own a, a upscale uh, body shop. So they design their pads themselves. They got two series. They got the traditional, which is a nice, we use on 3401. And then they got the low profile pro series. Uh, both of those come in and you can get them up to eight inch, but uh, uh, six inch, five inch also. Uh, so they work really well. They've got a tapered edge. And uh, so all three of those, those lineups are my preferred go-to uh, with the DA. And then with the forced action, uh, <clears throat> we also go with those three lineups, but we go with the traditional DRC uh, with the, with the, with the 3401. Yeah. I'm a big fan of those, uh, DRC pads. I mean, I, I love all the stuff from Buff and Shine too, but, um, those DRC pads are just a little different and something special. So. Especially with forced action, you know, yep. you just, the con anywhere there's, there's contours and so forth. You can just get in there. It rides so smooth on the machine. It's a really big, thick pad. That machine's got plenty of power to power it. I like it because you can put a little you can put a little ump behind it and really get in and 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 push things out. You can take and when you're when you're finessing it in the last stages that big soft pad. Uh, if you're you're kind of heavy handed detailer, it will it will flow a little nicer and so it's pretty cool. There yep. we go. And we did a um, we did a, a webcast with Buff and Shine last week. And uh, if any of you guys missed it, I did post the replay on Facebook yesterday. It's also up on our website, so you can find it there and on, and on our YouTube channel. And so there's some good pad talk. There you go. So let's see. Another question I got here is, um, well, this one will, you know, right in line with uh, machines. Uh, recently saw that you tested the new Udos polisher. Are you able to give any first impressions? And I think we got this question before uh, the video you put out. Uh, yesterday evening so you want to talk on that a little yeah you know it, it's it's interesting technology uh, I think what I'm most excited about a the, the the tool for for coming out with a brand new I mean you know the switchable gears has, has been around uh, Makita tried it years ago where you go from you know DA to, to rotary or from DA to forced action uh, nobody's really done it really super well um, this tool uh, 
first off, the, the unit I use was a hand-built tool. It's not a production tool yet. And you think, oh, hand-built, you know, it's better. It's actually not. Once I get into production, uh, some of the characteristics that I, I, I faced with the, the hand-built tool won't be faced with the production tool. Um, it's, it's a great tool. My first impression was it, it's heavy. I mean, that, that's the first thing. And, I, and the reason why I want to lead into that is because when you pick it up, you're going to notice that. The second thing that goes with that is it's really balanced. So it's heavy, but it's balanced. Uh, it's probably one of the smoothest DAs that I've ever used, meaning that the rotation was really good. Um, it, we, we, we got very little stall on it is that you can get into some weird angles and it was really, it was really easy to pull out of a stall to keep out of a stall. The other high point was, is that, and I forget the technology they call it. So you have to excuse me is the backing plate. Uh, Scott, one of the, uh, the main guys, good friend of mine from Lake country is he's a big, he's a big aviation guy. And if you think of the air inlets on an aircraft is that the air circulation on the backing plate is designed with that same type of induction uh, type system. And it brings air into the backing plate and cools the backing plate down. But not only that, it keeps uh, the pad surface and, and where, where the two come together, very, very cool. Um, there's some little caveats on it that I'd like to see them change a little bit. And that's why they got opinions, right? is it's a brand new tool. But uh, overall, I think it's, I, 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 was, I was really, uh, I enjoyed the opportunity to work with it. And uh, I'm excited to see what they do uh, before it comes out. And if they take any of the changes that some of us suggested uh, to heart and make them. So it's cool. It was, it, it, it was fun to use it. Cool. Very cool. Um, got a couple of uh, questions came in through Facebook just now about SEMA. Both of them are very, very similar. Any word on SEMA? Is it going forward as planned, business as usual kind of a thing? It's going forward, but I would be I'd be very cautious to say business as usual. Um, you know, we we got booth assignments a couple of weeks ago. All of us that are attending, uh, it looks to be that it's they didn't have any problems filling the booths up, and so it's gonna what what it's gonna look like. I'm not sure. I'm I'll be honest. I'm not. I'll speak my mind, and if SEMA is would be by chance be watching right now, I don't mind them. I, I think it's a mistake, and, and here's why: is that it's it's going to be good to come together. I get that, but you know what? So many people were hurt by this financially. I think we needed a year off to recover. You know, lick our wounds. Uh, plus, everybody's going to be freaked out. That's the biggest one of the biggest trade shows in Vegas. You know, I think the yeah. second largest. So everybody's going to be a little freaked out, you know, about what's going on. And the other thing is, is that, you know, it's going back into flu season again, you know? And so, um, you know, I know a lot of companies have taken the approach that they've minimalized and we're definitely looking at things that we can do. Uh, our party's going to go on. Is it going to be what it was last year? Probably not, you know, probably not. We, we just don't know. By that time, too, November's with what we just went through. Uh, November's, you know, a long ways away, uh, but it's going to creep up on us quickly. So, SEMA going? Yes. Are, 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 are we going? I can't speak for Chris. I uh, imagine he wouldn't miss it, but um, we're going to be there. <laughs> and uh, what it's going to look like? I mean, I hope to God we're not sitting in a, in a, in a huge – Hall like that with face mask on. That's gonna just already drives me crazy going to the store, you know. So I can't imagine sitting there. Yeah. Well, I was uh, I was talking to Dan Smith, one of the guys in, in our our group yesterday, and he did a couple of SEMA cars last year, and I think the year before. He's 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 done that kind of regularly, and he says this year it hasn't uh, been something that uh, they've reached out to him about yet, and he suspects that that the SEMA builds and everything else are going to be way down this year. Oh, Which makes yeah. sense. I imagine. You know, you got to go back to 08, 09, 2010, 2011 with SEMA. Uh, it was a different SEMA, and this one's going to be different. We got to prepare for that. Last year was, I mean, it, they keep getting bigger. I mean, you can't fit any more events in because we've ran out of nights, you know. I mean, so yep. it's, it's definitely going to be different, but 
Um, I, I really don't know what to expect. I mean, I'm excited to see everybody, but again, I, I honestly, personally and professionally, uh, I, I think it probably would have been wiser just to put it off for the year and let us all take a deep breath and come back in 2021, a, a little more secure, uh, with a little more dough in our pocket, a little more green in our pocket. Uh, and, and, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. It's going to be interesting times. Yeah. Crisanto yeah. type. Crisanto typed in. He says either we get the SEMA flu from hugging and shaking hands or we get COVID. So yeah. yeah. Jeez, God. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's, you're, you're going to get the SEMA flu. It's every, all of us know that, I mean, pretty much, I mean, it's, it's, it's a rare year that I don't come home with some kind of funk, you know, is I guess yep. a gunk, you know, from SEMA. And, uh, you know, last year, a lot of us think that we got this crap there. I mean, I had some weird indications that I did. Now, looking back and reading some of what some of the weird symptoms are, not with everybody, but, you know, I definitely. Uh, one of the symptoms they're finding out is it bloodshot eyes. And, Chris, if you recall, I had to go find drops to clear my eyes out because my, my eyes yeah. just blood red about the third day. And uh, I felt like crap. And I came home and I felt like crap for a couple of weeks. You know, so I didn't get sick, sick while I was there, but I definitely did not feel, you know, normal. Um, right. So it, it'll be interesting. I mean, you know, I hope it, uh, I hope it plays out and we'll, we'll see where it goes. Uh, Adam Anderson asked if you have any plans for a second book. Uh, yeah, you say that. Um, you know, we got, yeah, we got signed on with a, with a, I've got a second book deal. It has nothing to do with detailing. It's going to be about life and business. And that was due in January and everything got, everything got blown away. I had extended a little bit. They got their rough draft in January. They like it. Uh, but really it's gone underneath the radar since then. And I'm thinking that it's probably going to be delayed off until next year. Uh, but it's something that well, just last night I, I put down and put onto my priority list of starting back up. So it's something I'm really excited about, and it's going to be a combination of, of things about business, uh, life blending, entrepreneurship, you know, fatherhood, um, all the crap that just did that, that not crap. I shouldn't say that fatherhood's not crap, but, uh, just, just everything that comes at us in life and kind of how, uh, how you can better deal with things and so forth. So detailing books are tough. I mean, I might do an, a, a, an updated version of, of the book that's out there. Uh, I've thought about doing that, going through it. You know, we went through the book uh, these last several weeks and there, it's definitely aged a little bit, not much. There was a few chapters that were, you know, that I wish I could update. For the most part, it's still pretty rel rel relative to everything, so. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, well, I've obviously gone through the book with you as a result of that. And I thought um, most of it's still relevant. There's just, there's just certain parts of it that, you know, make it come across dated in some areas. Yeah, definitely. You know, 2012 was, you got to figure it came out in 2012, but for the most part, it was written in 2011, you know, uh, I got the contract in 2000, late 2010 but most of it was writ written in late 2010, 2011. So it, uh, you know, definitely, definitely a few, a couple, couple little sections that were like, okay, that goes back. Yep. Very cool. Well, Hey, uh, Chris Lee up in uh, Oregon, he cheated. He sent me a question via text a little while ago. Um, he wants to know if uh, during this time, he says, I still can't keep up with the work demand and I'm booked out over two weeks. Should I raise my prices and adjust and adjust or hire more staff? Says I know things can change with the virus at any minute. You know, uh, boy, you know, to hire on a part-time person, you know, um, why not do both? I mean, with new clients, I, I probably wouldn't go across right now. I mean, you know, raising your prices, there's, there's too many what ifs, but you know your business better than anything. Um, I'm never afraid to, to raise prices. I sometimes cautious myself, my, caution myself to where I'll raise them with new clients and not with existing, uh, just in case I don't have it, you know, it kind of a little bit of a buffer, you know? Um, but you know, I, I love part-time work. Uh, I love bringing in part-time people. I think there's a lot of people probably looking for part-time stuff right now. Um, 
it's a great opportunity. So I, I would look at doing both. I wouldn't do one. I'd do both. You know your business, and if yeah. you, the demand's there, and you just can't keep up with the demand, what, what, well, you know, hey, good for you, but, but B, you know, Chris, how many people do you have right now? Are you back down solo, or are you, are you? I know you had a couple going into this. Uh, that'd be interesting to find out too. You know where you're at with that. Yeah, we'll have to see, uh, see if he could reply to that one. Yep. Uh, let's see here. One of the, I'm going to go to one of the questions that we got from email earlier. Um, this one I liked, uh, I'm, I'm interested in buying out a somewhat local competitor and turning it into a second location for our business. What's a good rule of thumb for valuing a business? I'll tell you, let's, let's backtrack. That's a great question is that, um, we've sold several businesses, I've only bought a couple businesses, but I've sold several businesses. So uh, let's go back to the, to the, to the principles, the foundation of, of buying or selling a company. And it's going to be dependent on how good their record keeping is. So what do their books look like? Usually on service businesses like this, it's anywhere from, um, so if they've got solid book, books, meaning that you've got trackable income, uh, the books match up to the bank statements. That's the biggest, you know, one of the biggest keys to make sure they're not, you know, doing that. And then looking at their profit loss to see what their expenses were. Um, for instance, if you get into a company and they could be doing $700,000 a year, but at the end of the year, they're putting money into their company. So that sounds attractive, right? Because, oh, wow, man, these guys are doing almost three quarters of a million dollars and service work but yet what 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 did it cost them you know what 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 was their expenses what's their burn rate so i really look at that before anything and then really if they if they're if they're showing your profit how we've sold ours was is in the past on service business and it's really tricky is let's say that their their profit points a hundred thousand dollars a year after everything's paid for the owner's keeping about 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 a hundred thousand dollars a year off their business is it's anywhere from that value to three times that value, just depending on the company, how old it is, a good, again, how, uh, what, how good of customer list do they keep? What's the repeat business on it? How much are their names in it? So in, 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 in instance of our companies, so much of our company was, was me. It was the value of, of having my personal contact with the customers. So you get a little less money with that because, you take the risk of are the people going to take and come on. Let's say that, that, that I buy Chris's company out and it is are people doing business with Chris because it's Chris and, and, or, or is the business completely independent of Chris and they're used to dealing with staff. They're used to dealing with different people and having Chris out of the picture is not going to affect it at all. And so if that's the case, the value goes up a little bit. If, if, if the case is no, they're really tied into Chris and Chris was that business. Well, the value comes down and I'm going to probably, I'm going to probably offer them about that, that value of whatever they're, they're, they're netting uh, just that value alone, not, not by it with a multiplier. Cool. Good. Got a, uh, got a response from Chris. Um, he says, uh, got a, a total of three guys there. I believe that includes himself. I would, uh, I would raise my prices. I think you've got a good staff, uh, again, bringing in a part-time person to kind of help relieve that two week lead time is a good lead time. You're not too far out. Let me ask you this too, Chris, how much business are you missing because you can't get it in sooner? So that would be one. Are you missing any, or are they going ahead and signing on? And that would be a great question to see too. So let's see if you can type that back in. So let's yeah, you gotta, you, you gotta find out if, if you got people walking away, right? Yeah. If they're, if they're walking away, you know, it, it, then, then, you know, raising your prices somewhat is probably not going to fix that. People want to come in, they're going to spend the money and you're still going to be in the same spot and you're losing a little bit. Also, how much of it's seasonal, how much of this is going to dry up, you know, Jim Gogan back in, 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 uh, on the East coast is that he'll go hard. And then, you know, right, right, right. As school started cause goes back in, so to say it will slow way down. And so, um, you got to look at how much of that seasonal, I, I would caution you to, to hire on an, another full-time person. Uh, but I would definitely look at, 
uh, part-time and, and then raising your prices, but let's, let's hear the rest of your equation there. Let's see. They, oh, he just sent me a message. Uh, they don't like eating. Oh, eating. I think that's waiting. They don't like waiting two weeks and they want to go somewhere where it can be done in a day or two. Uh, he thinks maybe a 20% loss. I don't know if you're going to fix that even with hiring another guy on it, raising your prices. You know, uh, if they want instant right now, they're probably going to a car wash. That might not be your ideal client. You know, I'm not sweating it. I, you know, hearing that you got three staff, you, you know, you've, you, you've got a beautiful shop. Uh, I, I, I'd probably be my first remedy would be to raise my prices and with the new people coming in, you got to be real careful of doing that right now. People are weird. All of us are a little weird. There's, there's different, there's different trigger points that could send existing customers packing right now because we're kind of emotional. So people might look at it, really, I'm bringing my, you know, with what we just went through, I'm spending money and you're going to raise my price and bail. And, and then there's other people that won't mind. They're like, hey, I want to support you as a local business and, and, I'll, and I'll do it. And so, but I would caution you there, but, you know, bringing on even a full-time guy, how much are you going to get within that two or three day time slot? Probably not. You're probably going to be, I like being a week out, you know, I like, I think, I think really a week, 10 days isn't too bad. Um, you know, it, I, I've, I've, I've bought things recently where I wanted it right now. And when I learned that I wasn't going to get it right now, I was bummed, but it, you know, I did all the research and I knew what I wanted and I knew it was quality and I waited. I wasn't happy, but I waited. And so, you know, maybe it's is, is adjusting your sales pitch a little bit and trying to do a better job of explaining who you are. Um, maybe developing something, a, a little pamphlet that you send them and say, hey, here's why you got to be careful with people that can do it right now. The right now crowd might not be the best people to do business with and address that with your clientele. When you hear that, say, say, what's your time frame? You know, oh, I really wanted to dare to, you know, well, anybody and play a little verbal judo with them. Say anybody that can get you in right now, this time of year is probably not going to do too great of work. Yeah. Set some doubt. Could, I wonder what you think of this. You know, you, you could always, um, you know, ask them like, you know, is there anything about your job right now that is an emergency? Otherwise, if you're willing to wait, could I throw in a glass parency coating for you? There you Something go. like that. There you, you know? go. Give them some value, you know? Right. Yeah, that's a great point is ask them, hey, is, is there a reason why you need it right now as an emergency situation? It might be they're freaking out because their car's been exposed, you know? Uh, might be that they've got puke. Uh, you know, I just had I just had something to happen to my car and just the fact that it's there, I can't stand it. You know, I want to get it fixed right now, you know, right now. And so it might be one of those. And that, you know, again, I would just use a little verbal, you know, a mental judo on them and see if you can't just calm them a little bit. I would say that your answer is, is sharpening up your sales, your sales message and your support message and try to secure them. I think you'll pick up 10% of those 20 and you won't have to do anything. You won't have to raise your prices. You won't have to hire anybody. It's just you getting better at, at your pitch. Yeah. Um, Rick Walling has a, a, a similar question. Uh, his scenario is a little bit different. He says that, uh, that he's scheduled two months out right now. Oh, wow. And, and wow. Had, uh, had, had 15 calls just yesterday, phone calls. Um, so knowing those numbers, that's a little bit different situation. You definitely need to raise your prices and you need to hire somebody, you know, I, yeah. I would say, unless, unless they're coming to you because you're a craftsman. If you're, if you're tapped out, your glass ceiling, you've hit it price wise, then let them stack up and let them wait. You know, again, Rick's going to be the same thing is how much of that business are you losing? Those 15 calls you generated, how many are, how, how much of that money is just disappearing? You know, did they schedule? How many didn't schedule because of the lead time to get Two months, I got to tell you, I'm not waiting. Is that, that, that's the way I look at it. You know, I'm not waiting. Is that I'm not that patient. And it's not that you're not worth it. I'm that impatient. Two weeks? 
I'll wait two months. I'm yeah. finding another, I'm finding another service provider, you know, um, I'm really, really impatient, you know, so it, there's just, there's, there's a week or two. I'll wait for just about anything after that. You're probably going to lose me. Um, Kind of, kind of on a similar uh, topic here. We had one through email, and then also I got a, another. The same question from Jason Coronos. I hope I pronounced that right, Jason. Sorry, but as he says, uh, when booking appointments, do you ask for a deposit to hold the booking? Mm. And then, if so, how much? You know, that's a great one. I like to go with the flat fee. Is that Justin Lobato does a great job at this? You could do a percentage. I'm not a percentage kind of guy. I just want to do it to make sure to, to, that they've got skin in the game. Uh, we did that at our shops. We had a little bit of pushback at first, but because because of the, the with Rick and Chris both just said, you know, with backup schedules, it makes sure that they're legit, that you're just not filling up your schedule and they're going to lose that certain amount of those jobs because they went somewhere else. And so I would say that, you know, roughly I, I would get anywhere from 10 to 20%, 25% maybe on the upper end as a deposit, but I just put it in, in plain, plain uh, value form. I don't say, oh, I need a 20% deposit. I would just do the math in your head and a, or make it a flat fee on everybody is that, hey, if you give us a, you know, 48 hour heads up before cancellation, uh, it's utilized towards the purchase. If you don't, or if you just miss your appointment, uh, then you lose your deposit. But, you know, it, when you're first beginning, it's got to be a little more realistic um, a lot of times. So maybe, you know, if it's a $300 job, maybe 30 to 50 bucks, you know, somewhere right in there. If you're doing higher end work, of course, that, that, that number is going to go up. But I, I like that. I like, I like getting people to get skin in the game uh, when they're going to secure it. So, you know, like I said, when we first did it, we had a little bit of pushback. So we didn't do it for a little while. A couple of years later, we ended up doing it. Our reputation was good enough to where it allowed us to do it. And uh, bam, there it was. Great question. Very good. I, I see that one in the, uh, the various, uh, you know, Facebook groups quite a bit too. So uh, let's see. How about something a little bit? Uh, let, me, let me jump. Let me, oh, go let ahead. Me, let me go back on that a little bit you just said that if you're seeing it you know it's it's a question is that you know i think a lot of people is that you i just i put a post up that ed mylett i love his podcast and he put you can't bullshit your way to the top you know he's you he put a little meme out there right is the same as the, you've got to do deposits when your reputation demands it when your reputation will allow it is that you pretty much got to be real sought after and if you've got a two month waiting list, that's good. That's a good indicator you're sought after. Um, if you've got a two week waiting list, waiting list, you're pretty sought after. And so I think if you're in those situations, but if you're a day to day and trying to ask for deposits, you're probably not right for it yet. It's probably not the time yet. And so I think that there's, there's, there's clarifications. Also, some market's going to do pushback. Also, how long have you been in business? People are going to be concerned about that. The second thing is, let's say that people, if you're, if you're, if you're tight, be honest with yourself. If you're tight on money and you're using this as a way to kind of help feed your business is in the event that the people do miss it. And, and let's say that there's a death in the family, are you going to have that money to return? And so you've got to think about those, all those different things is that, you know, we, we know somebody in the industry right now, they got in that exact position to where they've taken money and now they're getting, you know, request for, People want their money back and the money's not there. And boy, that can, that can ruin you right away. Uh, it can also get you in trouble legally, you know? So you got to be prepared to take deposits for your work. And so I want to, I want to just jump back in there. Sorry, Chris. No, that's all right. That's all right. And yeah, you know, you I'm take here, change the subject for two. I'm sitting here, look, look up your bedroom. That's beautiful, beautiful home. Love all the crown molding on the top. Oh, <laughs> now, for those that don't know, Chris, Chris, lives in the house that he grew up in he bought that house from his parents yeah it doesn't it doesn't look like how it looked though when they had it all that crown molding and stuff back there i did all that work did you really yep yep well, the only the only thing i did was i paid somebody to do the painting because i hate painting so, really 
Wow, yeah. looks good. Anyway, change the subject, but yeah, <laughs> I imagine it looked a lot, a little different back in the seventies and eighties. You know? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, the room I'm in now is an addition that was built onto the house in the eighties. So, wow, yeah, looks good. Looks good. But cool. Uh, let's see. As a as a mobile detailer, what ceramic coating would you recommend that provides easy application in a client's garage or driveway, but provides good performance? Okay. Mobile, so a couple different ones. Well, first off, we're, we're introducing a brand new product from PNS, Double Blacks, called Soul. It's a topper over inspiration, but it's a standalone one year coating. And ironically, I just put it on out in the sun to see how it's going to go 80 plus degrees, low humidity, and you just got to shrink down the panel size. You can't go too huge, you know, you can't make it too big. Um, another one is that again, it's tricky when you get into it, but, uh, IGL has got a, a, a good one. SB three's got a couple, but I'm going to tell you right now, I was really impressed by, by, by testing our, our, our sole product. You know, I mean, it, it's really, and we, it, 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 it's crazy. I'm a scent guy. I think most detailers, are you a scent guy? Do you smell products, Chris? Do I smell them? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I, well, I mean. You know, I always at least once, right, to see what this thing smells like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this the sole pro, the sole coating smells like no other coating ever. Sm I, Dave just nailed it. I mean, it it is a cool smelling product, and and we're releasing that here very very shortly. I probably catch out of the bag now. Sorry, Bob. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> uh, but sole sole coating is going to be coming out. Um, should I should I totally should I totally blow it and tell them tell them another little secret on sole? Oh man, I don't know. You're the one that's filled, Bob, not me. <laughs> We're coming out with a with a hundred millimeter bottle of it, hundred mil bottle. So yeah. it's going to be very affordable, very user friendly. Um, it'll stay. The coating stays effective as long as you keep it out of sunlight and direct heat. Um, it will stay uh, good for a few weeks open, so you got plenty of time to use it, and it goes on really nice. Uh, it it it's a very very simple to use looks great wears great and uh you can make some money off it so there you go little plug cool good answer um you know from from experience uh uh you know inspiration that's out now is the kind of thing you could definitely do at a customer's home garage as well absolutely, um, absolutely. you know out, outside in the you know in the warm weather it's probably going to give you a little trouble maybe but uh in a garage i think you'd be all right yeah, direct sunlight, you know, any coating in the direct sunlight is going to be a real bummer, you know? So if you get it underneath the canopy or underneath the shade tree or something, but in a garage, you're right, inspiration is fine. Just shrink down the panel size. And then, but soul just, man, it went on real simple. I mean, it really, really nice. So great question. Yep. Um, related to coatings, uh, Carlos up in Oregon typed in, we're coming into boat season. Is there any ceramic coating? that can give five-year protection for boats. I don't think I've heard of one that offers that much protection. You know, um, I'll go back. I'll tell you what we tested it on. And this is a plug. Uh, Inspiration does real well, a double coat on a boat, but it's going to come down to this. I'd caution you. Five years is that boats see some pretty harsh environments. Mm -hmm. A, they're in contact with water constantly. B, what they use to clean them, a lot of boat yards will use a pretty heavy acids and so forth. So that's going to affect the lifespan of any coating. You don't know what that boat owner is going to do maintenance wise, housekeeping wise after you're gone. So I, I caution the five year thing on a boat just because it's, it's kind of, it's, it's a little, it's a little dangerous territory. I know there's some claims out there by some, you know, saying that they can get it on gel coats and then boats here's the deal with, with, with what boats are subjected to, you know, um, I, I would rather tell people the facts and tell them to reinstall every year or two and save them some dough that way than promising them a five-year coating. And, you know, two, three years in it's, it's, it's gone one year in uh, just to, there's too many what ifs on how the, uh, how the, how the boat's being maintained. Yeah. So simple answer. I'll give you two inspiration double coat with soul the soul over the top. So it's basically a three coat, a three level coating. Um, I will, and then I would, I'd even maintain that and, 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 and tell them that, you know, they have to once a year have a good bath and then a recoat. 
So that's why if it were me, I'd do a, a, a level of inspiration uh, or two uh, or a level of inspiration with sole over the top and then uh, do a light polish job and a recoat every, every once a year and, and save them some money. There's some truth in advertising. Uh, another brand that I did, we did a lot of boats on back in the day that weared real well was G Technic uh, C1 with XO over the top. Uh, C1 to this day, I, I know there's a lot of other hardcore coatings out there. C1's going back well over a decade, I think. Uh, C1 XO, that combo was one of the longest lasting coatings that we've seen. Uh, it was incredible, the lifespan on that coating combination but again on a boat things are going to change a little bit well, i don't know much about it but i think they just came out with a marine line also did they so yeah yeah, yeah but, it, I, but it, I i know nothing about it yeah it it you know again it's uh boats boats are tricky to to throw that throw that number out at just because it's so the, the variables of housekeeping yeah, Jim, uh, Jim Gogan typed in that uh, we retop every year on boats. There you go. So he does a few boats. What's up, Jim? Yeah, um, just uh, evaluating uh, all the questions here real quick. Um, so, so Rick asks, uh, since you, you let the cat out of the bag about uh, Seoul, um, when's it supposed to be available? uh here shortly uh we're gonna we're gonna take in i'm guessing here in the next in the next month um i think my boxes i'm looking over in the corner i think my boxes have got uh we're, we're introducing it to the the distributors in january or excuse me january in june gosh my calendar's all screwed up uh <laughs> I, w I wish it was january we could just go through and just skip the last like you know <laughs> the rest of the year <laughs> you know just go back and kind of erase what happened. Uh, so I think that you're going to buy, by, by 4th of July, you're going to be seeing a lot of videos coming out. Cool. You'll, you'll definitely hear about it, Rick. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it won't be kept a secret. Nope. Um, let's see. Uh, here's a fun one. What is your favorite new detailing product or tool from the last 12 months? Ooh, from the last 12 months. Um, so just something recent man um i'm trying to think of there's a few well some of them aren't new but they're new to me is, does that make sense and they're new they're yeah. seasonal you know um and so I, I i boy wow i'm looking at the shop trying to see what i really okay so uh in the last 12 months the new ik sprayer the foaming sprayer yeah. is badass uh, that thing is just incredible. So I'll, I'll go into two fronts. I'll go equipment and then I'll go products. So I love that, that, that piece of equipment, um, because now I'm not using my foam gun as much. Matter of fact, I'm just doing a video. I shot part of it already on the IK sprayer on the foaming gun. So I would say that's probably, that's probably one of my favorites. Um, and then let's go over to, uh, equipment. I'm coming through here. Uh, product wise is um, because of what we're in right now, I've been using for a ch changed SOP because we want to kill this COVID thing before we get staff into the cars. So the sanitizer, the PNS sanitizer, uh, I've got it down to where it takes me about 15 minutes to apply it and actually for sure kill, you know, the virus on the surfaces. So I'd say that's pretty good. It's relative right now. Uh, to what we're, you know, what we're going through. Uh, that's probably key. Uh, I'd say that the, the, another piece of equipment that was a complete, um, I didn't know how much I was going to like it is the, the flex, they're calling it the Pixie, you know, the new flex battery mm -hmm. pack, one, two, and three inch uh, polisher. Uh, the Grios, their new three inch, believe it or not, I really, I enjoy the machine. Uh, Chris, you've got one, right? Yeah, I have. Um, <clears throat> I actually have both of those tools now, and uh, the Pixie is very cool. And the the, the Grios machine is uh, for the money. I mean, you know, it, it's a different thing, right? It's not cordless. It's older technology with the 
um, the motor in there. It's still got brushes, all that kind of stuff. But for the 120 bucks it cost me, uh, it's hard to beat. Yeah. You know, it's cool tool. So there's a few product wise. I would say let's, let's go right now is that we don't know when it's going to come out because we're still in the testing stage, but we've got a new compound that PNS has been working on. Uh, it's in the development stages. And once we get it, we think we can get it even better than what it is now. Right now, it's probably one of, one of the best, if not the best compounds I've ever used in my entire career. Um, but it's, we're, we're, we think we can do more with it. And so we're really excited about that. So there's a whole bunch of stuff we just kicked out, you know, and there's, I'm looking around the shop because man, there's just, you know, there's just, I'm really right now, I'm really into add on services that add value or add profits to a job. So there's even some older products that we've used for a long time that we're really bringing back into the training just to show people how to do that, how to get more, uh, how to double dip on customers, you know, and get a little more money out of their pockets on each service. So, uh, I mean, rag top products for convertibles. If you're not, every time you touch a convertible, you should be, you should be making a little extra money off of servicing the, the soft top. Uh, that's, that's another one that's been around for years. Uh, but we've, 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 we've got a new found love affair with it because it's allowing us to profit more. Well, I tell you, I've had two, um, what I would call low cost favorite products from the last 12 months. And I think they're recent, more recent than that. Uh, the first one is the, uh, that for real, uh, attachment for a vacuum. Yeah. Yeah. Dynamos. You know, I, I, I used that recently for a car that had lots of dog hair and it, it worked awesome. It wore out pretty fast. Uh, you know, that was unfortunate, but it worked really well. Um, and then, uh, Ian at Auto Fiber came out with those uh, scrubber mitts, you know, and, and stuff. I can't remember exactly what they're called, but, uh, you know, low cost items that just make a little difference in the job when you're doing it. Are those things unreal? I mean, it, it, I, I used, I've got, I've got, I've got more here now and um, they're unbelievable. Such a simple concept, but it just makes your job better and faster. So great, great points. Yep. Great points. So we gave you a lot of stuff there, guys. Yeah. Um, hey, our buddy T out in Tahiti has a question. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure we're going to know the answer to this one, but we could try. <laughs> no. Every time T gets excited, he takes his shirt off. Yeah, he's probably not wearing a shirt right now. I'm probably sure he's not. not. Yeah. Um, you know, I, 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 I coded a mountain bike recently, and he asked a question about mountain bikes. He wants to know if we think the paint system is different on a mountain bike than it is on a car. Oh, definitely. Yeah. It, it, I think some of them are the same. A lot of them though, um, you know, it, it, uh, a lot of them are single stage, uh, paints, uh, some of them, uh, powder coating. I mean, there's so many different variables, but they coat up really nice. Mine's kind of a matte finish. And so I'm, I'm bringing it in and cleaning it up right now, tuning it up and, um, going to recoat, but even my Peloton, we got a Peloton bike in the shop. Uh, Doug Cunningham, our friend Doug Cunningham, he uses this quite a bit too. And he told me straight out, man, you are going to slobber all over that thing. <laughs> it's going to be covered. And he wasn't lying. By the time I, I got up to the 45 minute classes, the thing's just covered in, you know, gunk at the end of the workout. And I'll tell you, I mean, Peloton bikes, those things are expensive. Is that get into to, to coating Pelotons because it, my mind just, it just wipes right up. I mean, just cleans right up. So, um, I've got a single um, coat of inspiration on it with sole over the top of it. Man, that thing looks cool. I bet mine's the best looking. I've had it for almost two months now. I bet it's the best looking two month old Peloton uh, in the world right now. Looks pretty good. Huh? You'd have to. If I had one of those, you have to protect it from the dog slobber. My dogs get stuff on everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, ours is hair. So, oh, we get that too. We get that too. Um, in fact, I, I let my wife use, uh, our, our kitchen rug. I let her use our, uh, one of my rubber hair removal tools, you know, for the, for detailing on the kitchen rug. And she's like, I love this thing. So, oh, they're cool. They are cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dan O'Baker asks, uh, Rennie, would your goal be to have a fixed location and focus on retail offering paint correction and appearance protection services? versus just cleaning um 
So I guess that's more of a an, an auto salon kind of a shop. Absolutely. We moved that way, Dan. Good to see you, bud. Thanks for coming on. Uh, yeah, you know, my our goal was, I remember we started out, you know, with nothing. We started mobile. And, uh, you know, and I still love the mobile concept. We kept the mobile, we kept the mobile unit going even when we had shops. But I'll tell you, once you get into a fixed location, uh, there's nothing like it. Again, I love to take a multiple streams of income is that find out things that are needed in your community. And, you know, Daniel, your, your guys' company does a great job at that and, 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 and create a good fit for a multitude. Uh, general cleaning services, just like a wash or something like that, we, we got away. We didn't do that. Um, we didn't do, we, we did maintenance agreements. So we had a, we had a, we had a limited number of memberships that we could offer people that we sold out relatively. Once we started offering, it took, it took me a couple of years to sell my first one. Then once we started selling them and the word got out is that we filled up every space, all 25 spaces relatively quickly. And we kept it to that 25 spaces because we wanted to be able to handle them right. And they just paid us a flat fee uh, for, a, for a maintenance package that included, it was perfect car membership, which means that car, it was all inclusive is there was a thing, spills, tears, damage, road paint, um, all that wasn't covered naturally. But everything else, when we saw the car getting a little bit of wash scratches, we would just automatically schedule more time in for the next service, polish it out, recoat, and it was included in the monthly fee that they 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 paid. It's a great program. So the more the more options that you can get in there, we've got you know good friends of ours that are in Scottsdale, Detail Boss. You know they do paint correction, coatings, PPF, window tinting. You know so it's uh, they're doing all of that in their shop, and so it's it's we love that. We love that concept. We love that idea. And again, you know, bring them in and get in their pockets books as many times as you can. I'll, I'll point out, though, the guys at Detail Boss, you know, they can do an interior very well, too, though. So, you know, they're not turning that business away when it comes. No. Matter, matter of fact, those guys have won competitions on interiors and they they don't publicize the interiors as much, but they work on interiors constantly, you know, because, again, they don't want their customers going anywhere else. Somebody comes in with a with a car filled with dog hair, they, they know they might not like it and they might charge a fortune for it, but they, they know how to do it and they don't send it out. They, they keep that client with them. Yep. So I, uh, I shared this on my personal Facebook page too. And I, I missed a few questions that came in over there. Um, our, our buddy, Mark green up in, uh, up in Washington, he's got a question that, uh, that actually we kind of addressed earlier this week. He wants to know, is there a great solution that one can make at home to soften the bug jerky on the front of your car before cleaning those suicidal bugs off oh, to reduce the possibility of scratching? And uh, I don't know if you need to make it at home, but, you know, we've got a PNS bug off that has been a topic of conversation this week. Well, and what I do, Mark, is like we, we, we've got them all over my, my, uh, my car right now. Matter of fact, I'm shooting another video uh, with bug off. And simply what I'm going to share in the, in the video is what I do is I spray the front end of the car in the mirrors, even, even some of the glass, as long as it's not out in the direct sunlight. But what I do is I break everything into sections. So I'm going to break it into the nose, spray the nose down. And because my car, the paint's in really good shape, it's coated. I then take and I dampen the towel, with just water, drain it out. And then I saturate the towel with bug off on it, just a, a microfiber towel. And I go over and agitate that surface a little bit to break the bugs up and then rinse it off. If the bugs aren't suicidal, if they're not, if it's not kamikaze level, you know, bug attack is, or if they're not love bugs down, down South, they got the love bugs. You can spray it on, let it dwell and then, or excuse me, apply it, let it dwell and then spray it off with a pressure washer. Most cases it's going to take that off just right then and there, just that way. But in the event that they're on there and, you know, Washington this time of year, uh, when I used to fly up there is that we used to say that the bugs had to have, they had used to call them for a, to, to approach. They, 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 they'd contact the tower uh, because the bugs were so damn big, you know, and same with Idaho. So you get into areas like that, you know, the bugs are really bad a couple different ways. If they're not, if they haven't been on long, spray the, the bug off on, let it dwell, spray off. If the bugs have been on for a little longer is take and Ian's got another in the rag company, both have got, uh, bug sponges, really light duty bug sponges that you can use to agitate uh, those surfaces and the rinse off. But I'll just use a nice microfiber, spray it on there, 
agitate it, spray it off, repeat. Very cool. Um, and for those of you listening, uh, Mark Green's got a great podcast called the Cars Yeah podcast. You guys should check out. And he does another one too now. I honestly can't remember what it's called. Sorry, Mark, but it's a uh, it's with uh, I think Keith Martin and they they go over car values. Wow, that's so. cool. I've seen a couple of those. Mark's a great guy. We're gonna have him on our our podcast here shortly. He's got an incredible story uh, of 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 not just being a car guy and being connected, but being in the in the care industry, in the car care industry. So I can't wait to get him on because he's just a. I mean, he's 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 been on TV shows. He's done a lot. I see him every year. We're gonna miss seeing you at Monterey. It's gonna be weird this year, but. Uh, I just, I just, I just heard that he connected with, with, uh, Gordon McCall, which is a good friend of the industry, a good friend of us. And, uh, Gordon's just a great guy. So I can't wait to hear that discussion. It's uh, pretty amazing. Yeah. We're working on uh, having Gordon on too with us. Yeah. So, so. If you don't know who Gordon McCall is. Google him. He's just incredible, incredible human being, incredible car guy. Uh, it's just, he's, he's, he's an inspiration. Yeah uh let's see oh yeah oh he typed in uh the the name of the new podcast is called buy sell hold so oh what a cool name man is that cool or what yep yeah mark it's it'll be interesting to see what car values do with all this of of of, of, of what's going to go on with this you know oh that's for sure although you, you never know you know people with money seem to always have money too so yeah, yeah it will be 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 be, uh, be interesting just to see what happens you know so uh let's see well we're about an hour in you want to keep going a little yeah, bit or one more let's do one more if we've got it okay well um i'm while i'm looking for the next question here i do know that uh that our our buddy john fernandez out in florida you know he stayed with us at the the pns house out there during mobile tech ah, great um he says he jumped in and opened up his own mobile detailing business good for you so john. good for you congrats man yeah well you can't beat you know being your own boss you know um it uh it it, it can be the best thing you ever do or the worst thing you ever do it just depends you're young aggressive take advice well uh, get a great couple great set of mentors and make sure you're building your life up, not just your business. Make sure that you keep priorities straight and you keep true to life. Keep true to you. Keep true to your loved ones. Yep. All right. Well, I think we could we could uh, try and finish up with a little bit of interior stuff here. Uh, what changes to our interior detailing procedures would you recommend making in a post COVID-19 world? Uh, should they be permanent changes? or should they be optional for the customer with an increased cost? Well, I think both. I think the first change that you got to do is change for, that, that protects you and your staff and your family. So what we're, we're we, we've trained our SOP. We put, we're, we're putting in new equipment today as we speak. Um, we've got we know, our, our shop. You can probably see behind me the blue. Um, you can see the blue hose going right across the top of there is that's all compressed air. Um, it doesn't match our color. So I've got tubing where I'm gonna cover that all up uh, cause it just drives me nuts being blue. Um, but we're bringing systems in to where we're gonna actually take and use an EPA certified product that will kill COVID. Uh, we're gonna, it's gonna take us 15 to 20 minutes of vehicle uh, additional time. We're doing that for us. We're not doing it for the, the customer. We're doing that to protect us when we get into vehicles. Um, naturally PPE is that, uh, protocol is that I've always been a big, um, wherever I'm at is I'm looking around right now. I just clean my desk off, but I've got gloves pretty much close by. Uh, I, I'm not getting into cars without gloves, you know? And then, um, you know, if they want the, if they want the best performance in there, it's something we're, we're seeing probably 50, 50 right now, maybe, maybe 60, 40 which is ironic to me is 60% of the customers just don't care. And then the other 40% do care what you're doing. So will it be long-term? You know, viruses come and go. Um, I, I'm still going to be protective. I'm still going to do things a little different. PPE is going to be the biggest thing, but also the products we use, we're going to use a sanitizer from now, from now on to kill it, to wipe, pre-wipe it. 
and then we'll finish down our normal way. But we're definitely going to change things up, and that's that's for good. The other thing that allows us to do is it allows us to share that with our customers, that, hey, this is standard in our operation. This is what we're doing. Because there are going to be people, you know, right now, I've got to go get the oil changed to my car. And ironically, we were right down by the dealership weeks ago, and everything's closed. We, we hadn't had anything to eat. So we just drove through somewhere. We found a shade tree. We had a nice lunch, you know, together, uh, my wife and I on the tailgate of my truck. But it was right there by the dealership that I got to take it to. And there was no PPE whatsoever. They were getting in and out of cars like it was nothing. And I won't take it to that dealership. Yeah. You know, because of the perceived value of, 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 of going the extra distance. So uh, just for what that's worth. So, you know, will it be forever? Um, you know, we're going to teach it forever. You know, we're going to teach the difference because this is, you know, it's the, the biggest financial crisis in modern history. So I think, you know, we got to, we got to, we got to treat it as so. Uh, also, it's got, it, it's going to come back. Uh, these things do come back, whether it's in our lifetime or not, who knows, we don't know what's going to happen. Um, and so we want to be ready for it and we want to be essential next time. We don't want to have, we don't want to have some government agency telling us we're not essential. So ask us as independent business owners, uh, us as an industry, we got to be prepared for that. We got to come together and, and, and make sure we figure that out, uh, along with the IDA and other organizations, manufacturers and so forth is that we make sure that we are essential going into the next, the, the next round if this happens again. That was a quick hour. It did. It, go, it went by fast, huh? Yeah. Can I go get coffee now? I'm dying. As long as you remember to turn it on. <laughs> I did. I turned it on. I walked by to fill my cup up and I was like, sad face, sad face. And it's Kona blend. It's my favorite coffee, man. I made one just for you guys. It's so <laughs> good. And so I'm, I'm excited. I get Kona well, that, and Swirl, Swirls, Swirl Killer. Those are my, my two go-tos. Well, now you'll get to go uh, go sit on the, the porch or something and enjoy a cup of coffee and, not, you know. Not, not for long because Kyle's going to be up here and we're going to be doing uh, some videos, you know. So uh, in mentoring and coaching, I'm going to bring him in. And you haven't seen the shop, guys. We we tore our shop apart. I mean, it it is it is torn apart right now. And the reason why is we're – we're getting it better organized. We're back into training next month and it's going to look better, feel better, operate better, be smoother. Uh, everything that we've been wanting to set up is, is not everything, but majority of things that we want to set up a new water lines. We're waiting to put on in our indoor, uh, our indoor wash bay. So we got, we got all kinds of stuff going on, but it is a wreck right now. Yep. Well, uh, you haven't had me up there to help you do it, fix it yet. So, you know, you just say the words and well, I think next week we're definitely we gotta go through and, and we're going to, we're going to give it a bath and uh, I, I got to get the, this week I got to try Oh, that's what I'll do tomorrow. You just reminded me of something. Thank you. I know what I got to do tomorrow. Okay. I got to go down the hill. Tomorrow. All right, guys. Well, Hey, thanks Chris for putting this on. Thanks for everybody that, uh, that came in. That was a good time, man. That was a good time. I like these. I like these open questions. Yeah, so, it, was, it, 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 it was, it was fun. So uh, awesome. Well, if you guys have other questions, you can always send them our way. And uh, I'm not sure when the next time we'll do a live Q&A like this is. Uh, maybe we'll do it uh, definitely more often. But um, you can send the questions in anyway, and we'll, uh, we'll do our best to help you out. Yeah, we so. might. If we don't have time, if we get enough questions, we'll just randomly come on and set a time and do it, you know, yep. during the week. So, all right, guys. Well, hey, go out. Be good to each other. And uh, take and go make some money. Get on it. Don't hold back. And go full steam ahead. We'll uh, happy to telling everybody and I'm going to go get coffee. I'm dying. <laughs> all right. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll see you guys all later. We'll see you.